you are not going to believe what I'm going to say next, but a religious organization in the U.S. has actually been a leader in sex education. I know that's going to blow your mind. It but did. But it's the Unitarians. The Unitarians are very different. They have a wonderful curriculum that goes all the way through the lifespan. In fact, they just finished their newest book on older adults. It's called Our Whole Lives, O-W-L. And OWL, their acronym, is taught in religious institutions all over the country, all over the U.S., maybe other places. I don't oh, know, maybe amazing. it's happening in New Zealand. And they're cool. I mean, they're very progressive. They're also, they included a, an uh, activity for older adults that I wrote for them as a lesson plan. So I know that that activity is really good. <laughs> Just kidding. But really, seriously, they are doing fantastic work. And they're building bridges between adults and their kids. For instance, in a congregation, They don't just want the kids to take the classes. They want the parents to be in their separate uh, discussion groups just with the adults so that the adults can learn how to answer the questions, how to look for resources, how to be a, how to be an, what I call an askable adult, somebody who's got the affect that the kid knows the parent isn't going to flip out when the kid asks them a question. You know, we always tell uh, when I teach parents about uh, talking to their kids, I always say, have your conversations about sex while you're driving because you're looking forward. They're looking forward. Nobody's looking at each other, hopefully, and you're just driving. And that way the kid isn't, you know, reading every grimace or, or angst ridden emotion on your face as a deterrent. They're seeing the road and they're asking a question. But I would say that in this particular um, example I'm giving of OWL, they're doing a really good job of doing what I think of as intergenerational sex education. And one of my hopes, I don't know if I'll ever get there, but one of my hopes is that the older adults that I teach begin to talk to their grandchildren. Wouldn't that be amazing? So that there's not that parent-child thing where I'm a bit squeamish about talking to my own kid, but maybe it's grandma or grandpa that I'm talking to. It's a little bit different. So that's, that's something I've, I've talked with other people. And there's a sex educator in um, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the U.S., named Tracy Gilbert. And Dr. Gilbert has really done some very interesting thinking about intergenerational sex ed in the black community, which I love. And I, I, I really support her work. And um, I'd really encourage your listeners to uh, take a look at some of the work that she's doing. She's fantastic. I love that idea and and the idea of flipping that so that when it comes to our elders, our elders rather, when it comes to our elders that um, maybe our young people have a role in opening up conversations about sexuality there the other way. Yeah, yeah. wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it? Yeah, you know, there's, there's a funny cartoon of the kid in front of the um, laptop and the father comes and taps him on the shoulder and says, well, I guess it's time to talk about sex, son. And the kid turns around and says, what do you want to know, dad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so There is so a bit the, of that going on. Yeah. So the kids, the kids know so much and they've learned so much in so many different ways. Um, some of it really helpful and some of it not very helpful, but it'd be great if the young people could start the conversations. And there are some, really good groups in the U.S., like Advocates for Youth, I don't know if you know them, or Scarletine, that are doing sex education with young people, where the young people are on their advisory board. So they're teaching the adults what it is that they need to, uh, you know, uh, bring forward. (laughs) 